Burleson from Missouri for five minutes. Greetings, Mrs. Carnahan. Good to see you. Um, you know, being a Missourian, I'm sure you're aware of Cerner, the, uh, the former company out of Kansas City. Um, I worked as a consultant um, for them and others for 20 years and saw really a revolution happen um, whenever after COVID of employees being able to work from home. And the, and the concern from the private sector was that productivity would decline. Um, remarkably, it did not. It actually uh, improved. And so I was, I was encouraged to hear um, that you, you talk about the, the, that you keep count of, or an account of the productivity from some of the, these agencies. And I wanted to hear from you if you could elaborate on what, what systems or methodologies and, and software that you might be using to, to actually um, account for the productivity. Yeah, thanks for the question. And we're just focused on GSA when it comes to our productivity numbers. So just so, your agency yeah, so specifically. I, I know that OMB and others will, will be looking at those numbers and gathering them from other agencies. But yeah, G GSA's, um, as I said, leaned into telework and remote work for 20 years, like through multiple administrations. Um, and we have been very intentional about making sure we see the results of that, uh, both reducing our footprint, saving money, but also better business volume. And as I said, business volume has gone up 82% in, in the last 10 years, 37% in the last three years, which was the most remote the agency's ever been. Um, and our customer satisfaction scores have gone up. So for us, those are the metrics that really matter and we pay, pay close attention to. Thank you. And that, so your own office stroke that you occupy, your office space for GSA, Given the the remote work that you're now implementing, are you is there any plans to reduce the the footprint of your of GSA's office space? Yeah, we we are we are thinking about that all the time and talking to other agencies about how we can either you know share a space, move out of that space, and have somebody else in that space. And so there are lots of conversations going on. Um, one of the other things, just to note in in the short term, is uh, we are using uh, a, an entire wing of our building for the presidential transition which GSA is tasked to do every year, and sometimes it's very expensive if you go out and rent space for that. But we decided that we could use our own space and convert that and be able to save a lot of money in that way um, because the building wasn't fully occupied. So we are we being very thoughtful about this and, as I said, have a history of consolidating our own, uh, both here in the Washington area where we got out of an expensive lease uh, and got out of a, another building to consolidate into that headquarters and save $300 million. So we want to do more of this. Um, I had a question about some of the Biden rules that have been implemented and the impact that you, that you might be experiencing. So I know one of them was to require uh, project labor agreements um, going forward. How has that impacted your decision-making process? How has it impacted the costs for some of the construction? And then finally, how would um, do, you, do you have a waiver process, or how do you how do you go about that? So um, obviously, we are we are all in for trying to make sure there are good American domestic jobs, union jobs, whenever we can, um, and using the government's buying power to reflect that. Um, in some places, that's easier than others, uh, but in all places, you can make sure that there are certain you know, contractors that are doing right by their workers. And so uh, we do have teams that think about this, ask about this, and there are, if, if it's unavailable, then, then there are waiver processes. But okay. as, as a first choice, we want to use that. So, I mean, you're, you, you come we from a, rural Missouri. You have a preference. If it, yeah, right. you come from, your family comes from rural Missouri, right. and so you're aware it's, there's some pockets that yep. just will not have that, right. that presence. So right. it's good to hear that there are some waiver opportunities. My, my other question has to do with um, the electric vehicle mandate. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, again, being from rural Missouri, uh, the, my question has to do with, you know, what are the increased costs for, your, for the agencies that are now converting to electric vehicles? Um, is, is it, on average, over 10,000 a year uh, per vehicle? Is that, is that a safe estimate? Yeah, so I, I can get all those numbers for you about what the cost differentials are. Uh, but the thing that is important to note that all of this, you mentioned the word mandate, and that's not exactly how we're thinking of it. It's really mission driven. So for agencies that have a use case where an electric vehicle could make sense for them, 
we are helping them get those. So we're not forcing these on any agencies. Agencies are deciding that they want to do it, and we're helping them procure them at good cost. And, and within rural America, are, you'll provide waivers for places where there are no EV stations or it doesn't make sense? Yes. Yeah, so again, the, the agency decides what its mission needs are, right? And then they come to us, and we help them get vehicles at the best price. So we're not telling them who, who in their agency needs what kind of vehicle. They're making those decisions, and we're helping them buy. Thank you.